Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's your host, Brian, and welcome back to another Q&A episode, episode number four. Before we dive into day four of the Candyland's trip and then into your questions, let's start with some news. This Friday, I actually plan to launch my new project, which I mentioned in my previous episodes. I haven't really thought of a name for it yet, and I'm still kind of tossing around some ideas here and there. But in terms of the formats, I plan to give some shout outs to not just drummers, but also to bass players, guitarists, vocalists, keyboardists, you name it. It's best to recognize everybody for their musical capabilities. Also, I plan to do... I actually plan to also highlight some musical talent that some drummers in our community have done. I won't spoil any names just yet, but I got a couple right now, and I'm also going to show and highlight their talent. You guys are going to like this. It's going to be pretty interesting. In terms of live streaming, unfortunately, I was not able to get anything this last weekend. So I'm hoping maybe I can get something in the next coming weeks. This week is Thanksgiving, so it'll be a little tough, especially getting together with family. At this point, it's best to stay tuned, and I'm just hoping to find some time since it has been a little tough working at the restaurant and find time to make sure to get some practice here and there. So I'm hoping to get some sort of live stream going forward. So as I said, stay tuned for that stuff. As for collaborations, I did mention I sent off some of my material to Stomatis to put together. That's for our Mon Amarf cover. Hopefully we get something either this week or next week. So at this point it's in Stomatis' hands. So stay tuned for that one. And for the Vertical Horizon, I managed to get some of the video and audio I'm hoping to put that together very soon. So maybe release it next week. As I said, it is Thanksgiving, so schedule's a little tight at the moment. Especially, I imagine it's gonna be pretty crazy this weekend at the restaurant, so we'll have to see what happens. So hope to have it next week. So as you know my saying, stay tuned for that stuff. All right, so day four of the Candyland trip. This one, we're still in Glen Canyon, and we also take another little boat ride on Lake Powell. That comes a little bit later, but first, we take a plane ride out to Monument Valley. And it was just beautiful taking that plane ride all the way out. The plane was real small. It was your typical propeller ones. And I mean, I'm not the craziest when it comes to that sort of heights and being in cramped that sort of space. But regardless, I still got some killer shots with the camera. One was the Rainbow Arch, which I was pretty happy to get. And I wish I could remember some of the other ones, but um, this one I'm going to let the pictures do more of the talking because words alone just cannot describe how beautiful it was. But when we landed, we actually landed in the Navajo Reservation. And our tour guide actually was Navajo and part Apache. His name was Timothy. And he did an awesome job giving us a nice tour, taking us in, to seeing all the sites, describing everything. And he, a funny fact was, uh, when some of the Western films that came out, I'm sure maybe there was a couple of spaghetti Westerns, but regardless, he mentioned that sometimes they wouldn't use the name Arizona. They said it was taking place in Texas. So that's where the setting was, apparently. So I don't know why, but apparently everything must be in Texas. Regardless, it was totally worth it. And as I said, I'm just going to let the pictures do the talking because words alone just cannot describe how beautiful it was. So after we flew back, we went to our hotel just briefly, but then we got back on Lake Powell. And this time we actually took a little further down and got close to the dam. And that was pretty nice. And along the way, we got a little history lesson. Even, actually, that's right. They actually had a, one of the tour guides was actually Navajo. And she sang for us in the Navajo tongue. And she sung beautifully. I have to admit that, that was definitely an experience all in and of itself. But after the boat ride, we came back, had a nice dinner at the hotel. I think that was the first night I actually had buffalo chicken dip, which is pretty funny. But regardless, beautiful night, had an awesome dinner. Dessert as well. Yeah, I decided to stretch my legs and did some nice walk-in in and around the hotel. But that's day four of the trip, and it was totally worth it too. And so let's jump right into the questions. All right, 
So first question comes from Stomatis Kikes, aka SK Drumming. I've given Stomatis a good amount of questions already, so he owed me one, and I made sure to remind him of that. So thank you, Stomatis, for your question. His goes like this. My question goes like this. I saw the sticks. Impressive nook for sure. How about their balance, and as about their finish? Do they slip when you sweat after a long practice session? So Stomatis is actually talking about the new sticks that I showed in my last video, which are actually the sticks I got from the Ryman Auditorium, these bad boys right here. And believe it or not, after I saw this question, I used this week and a little bit of last week to actually try these sticks out. And I was practicing for the collaboration for Vertical Horizon, and I used these ones, and I also used these for our collaboration, <laughs> Stomatis. You'll notice when you see the blackness that came out the sticks here and everything. So, after doing a nice little test run with these guys, I have to say, I only recently did their balance, which was right about where the year was on these guys, 1892. That was kind of a little hard to do because I had to really, <laughs> actually fell out of my hands a couple times, but regardless, they were actually very good. The only thing I will say is, as the session kept going on, and as my hands started getting a little bit sweaty, they did feel like they were slipping. That could have just been me, but it did feel like maybe at any moment they could have just like slipped right out of my hand and went flying. Fortunately, they didn't, and everything turned out okay. And I have to say, it did feel good. I think I gotta give these guys a little bit more test run there. Uh, in terms of finish, definitely very smooth. Can't honestly say how many times they probably say on this. <laughs> Regardless, I will say, just to answer the last part there, and I already touched on it, they do slip a little bit. So, as I said, I'm gonna make sure I give these guys a little bit more of a test run there. So, hope that answers your question there, Stamatis. Next one comes from John BMX for Christ. John, you left me a good few comments there. Uh, two questions and one was actually a statement. So we'll start with the first one, which was the statement. You need to play a country song with the new sticks. <laughs> uh, John, this is interesting because as you know, Nashville is the epicenter of country music. So I want, I want people to decide what song they want me to play with these sticks. So John, if you want to reply to say, any song, really. I'll do any country song you throw at me there. Gotta give it a little practice and everything since obviously got collab and then the one with Stomatis. But John, you decide. I'll play it and I'll make sure I use these sticks. But John's next question, delve into movies. And this one was interesting because I had to delve back into my memory with this one. Favorite top three movies and why? Now, the three that come to mind, you'll be like, uh, duh. So... <laughs> Uh, the first one that comes to mind, and I'm going to say these three are not in any particular order. I love all three of these movies. The first one that came to mind was Goodfellas. Robert De Niro, Ray Liotta, and Joe Pesci. We did lose Ray Liotta tragically, so that one's a good nod to him. But I was really a big fan of like the Mafia movies back in the day. So I also watched the movies like Casino. I did get a little bit into Sopranos. I wish I had finished it because I know it's one of the best series that people people have said that it is the best series that they have seen, especially in terms of like mafia and that sort of genre. I have to say, I really love the story. It was definitely long and that tends to be the case with uh, Martin Scorsese and his movies, but there's always some sort of symbolism behind it too, especially in terms of like heaven and hell themes in terms of like the violence, maybe in some case, some sort of redemption here and there. <laughs> I have to say good fellows, in terms, of the, in terms of what I just described, that's why I would pick Goodfellas as one of my favorite movies. The next one delves into the Star Wars trilogy. The original, I'd say the original three, because in terms of chronological order, it's four, five, and six. It can't, <laughs> this was tough because it came down to the two. It was either A New Hope or Return of the Jedi. The reason why I say New Hope that was actually the first time I had seen Star Wars, and that was way back in the day. And in fact, that was when I had VHS, and I was playing the, those tapes, and I used to watch... I used to watch more of those two. I wasn't really a big fan of Empire Strikes Back. Don't judge me, I don't know why. It just didn't interest me for some reason, but... Between Return of the Jedi and A New Hope, I just absolutely love those movies. It was stunning. The visuals, the battle scenes, especially in terms of the themes some sort of redemption, especially with Darth Vader kind of redeeming himself near the end there. Between those two, I have to say Return of the Jedi. 
it was definitely more action oriented and there was just so much in that movie and it just captivated me throughout the beginning from beginning to end it was just that awesome so i say number two right there and number three also delves into another trilogy and this one i'm going to say lord of the rings the hobbit was also in there but unfortunately i i have to give it to more lord of the rings but between the three which was the fellowship of the ring two towers and return of the king i had to feel two towers i felt more captivated when i was watching that one and i'm not just talking about the original believe it or not we actually watch the extended editions and those ones are like maybe an extra 40 so maybe close to an extra hour of like footage that they had to like cut in order to like minimize it but even the originals were almost close to three hours but two towers had the battle of helms deep there was a whole thing with fangor forest and then eventually them taking their revenge against saruman and isengard there was a struggle with frodo and i can't remember the exact quote at the end but i love what sam was saying near the end there's there's something in this life that's worth fighting for it was along those lines and i'm sorry i actually butchered it a little bit but i'd say that was one of the more better quotes that i've heard in movies so the two towers in terms of three movies the two towers return of the jedi and goodfellas so there's that question for you there john i hope that answers it and the last one from john actually <laughs> this was interesting because do you really like a particular song like a love song or something like that that you're really embarrassed to admit I have to honestly admit, John, this was tough because in terms of like the classic rock where any sort of love song, you get what's going on, especially with Van Halen. Honestly, I don't know because I know one song I did like was Can You Feel the Love Tonight, which was actually from the Disney movie The Lion King. And I haven't listened to it in a while, but I do remember it was pretty good, but unfortunately I felt embarrassed to admit it. So... I think to answer your question, John, I would say, can you feel the love tonight from The Lion King? And the last one comes from Drum Attic, a.k.a. Eric. Thank you so much, Eric, for these questions, and I hope we can get in touch, talk more about our collaboration going forward. But here is Eric's question. Good questions. You can choose any of the following vehicles to be yours. Which one and why? And the vehicles are Knight Rider, Airwolf, Street Hawk, Blue Thunder, or Magnum P.I.'s Ferrari. Totally piggybacking off of Jack, or sorry, totally piggybacking off of John's question formats. And uh, these are definitely a fun question here, Eric. So this was tough too. And I actually had to look up the pictures to actually make sure I was going to answer these right. But I would have to, as much as I like each one of these in terms of the names, I would have to not do Airwolf or Blue Thunder. And I'm not, I'm not a big fan of helicopters anymore. And you would have to probably force me in some sort of way to get me on a helicopter. Otherwise, I am never getting on one. Uh, but I think if I had to kind of break it down, it would either be between Magnum P.I.'s Ferrari or the Knight Rider. You know, let's see. I have to say the Ferrari. And I've always, I've actually I've always been a fan of the Ferrari and Lamborghinis and those kind of fancy cars and wish, God, I really wish I had one of those cars. But when I did see the picture of Magnum P.I.'s Ferrari, I, it was more old-fashioned. In fact, it was more of like the original Magnum P.I. So, uh, I would say that would be fun. I'd say it's an easier way to pick up chicks, too. So, But it, I'd say out of all the pictures I saw with each of these vehicles, Magnum P.I.'s Ferrari. It, it definitely looked the most cool. Most cool. <laughs> I would say it looked the most badass, to be honest. So... There you go, Eric. I hope that answers your question. And so, that wraps up episode four of the Q&A session. I want to thank all who participated in this. I hope to get some more questions in my next episode. So, these guys are doing it right. Keep it coming, people. And I want to see some more questions coming forward. Come on, people. Let's keep it going. Woo! All right. So, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe below. And also, make sure you hit me up on my podcast. You can also check out some of the interviews I've done so far as well as ones I'm going to release pretty soon. So looking forward to releasing those. And I want to thank you guys again so much for watching. Stay safe. Stay tuned, y'all.